Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, I've got a little pistol video for you here today. There's something a little bit different. I've had some inquiries about this pistol before, but we're going to go ahead and get to it. Um, this is the Rock Island Armory, uh, MAPP-1, MS, or MAP-1. And this is a pistol made in the Philippines. It's uh, obviously, if you're familiar with uh, CZ pistols, it's a it's a clone, like many many others. And and basically, you know, the the questions that have come up with this is for people who are looking for something that's in this type of uh, format and styling. Um, is it going to be as good as a CZ on a budget? Uh, are there any other concerns with the firearm? Well, of course, we're going to address all the features and specs on this gun, and we're going to try to answer those questions and many more in just a minute. All right, once again, welcome back. We appreciate you joining us today. If you're new to the channel, or if you've been watching our videos and you haven't had a chance to do so yet, there's something you could do that would help us out an awful lot, and that is to simply locate that subscribe button in the lower right-hand portion of your computer screen there and hit that. If you're on a mobile device, you can just scroll down below the video, hit subscribe, and hit the bell icon. It'll let you know whenever we do something new. It helps us out a lot, and we really, really appreciate it. So, once again, on deck today, we have the Rock Island Armory. Uh, MAPP-1 MS. So this is a little uh, 9mm hammer fired pistol. Um, this is a 16 round magazine so you have a 16 plus 1 capacity and uh, we'll get into more of that here in just one second. Um, just so you can see that we are clear we are empty and we are 100% safe there. I want everybody to see that right off the bat. All right, so one thing we always like to do, of course, is give you a little comparison as far as size because these are all guns that we're talking about potentially carrying. And so we'll break out the old Glock 19 here because that seems to be a standard many people are comfortable with. The, these pistols as far as weight when they're loaded, are actually real, real similar. Um, the loaded weight on this is about, you know, 2.4 pounds, and that's really close to what the Glock is. Um, so they're similar in that respect, and of course the capacities are very similar, just like we talked about. You know, your Glock, if you don't know already, you know, that's a 15 plus one, so it's one less round. But I think it's close enough um, to call them, you know, similar uh, capability weapons as far as how many rounds they carry that type of thing obviously they're completely different in every other respect it's a hammer fired gun versus striker fired gun but anyway i digress so looking them over um i'm always a big fan of a big trigger guard uh, because i think that if you're wearing gloves or if you've got bigger hands or whatever your concern is wanting to get inside the trigger guard quickly i think that's good and it does have that um they're very similar in length if you look at them from a top-down standpoint here, you can see that the width, the map is going to be a little bit wider, um, you know, especially toward the rear. And, of course, it's got that beaver tail there, which is going to make it just a little bit longer. And of course, it's a little bit longer in the grip. If you look at it here, you can see that you're going to have a little extra grip right there. But not terribly. And of course, uh, where that sticks out on the holster is probably not going to be as much of a concern anyway. But anyway, um, you know, looking them over, you can see that with the weight being similar and kind of the, the size, the overall size and shape being similar, if you were going to carry the um, map here and you're used to carrying something like the Glock 19, well, then obviously they'd be very similar. All right, well, let's go ahead and talk about the features. And once again, you know, if you look at this design closely, if you're familiar with, you know, CZs, and, and of course there's a lot of other uh, clones besides this, but uh, it's kind of interesting uh, to see just how similar this gun is to, uh, you know, like a CZ-75. And uh, looking this thing over, of course, we mentioned in the beginning, you've got your magazine. Uh, I'll once again show you that we are clear. You can see all the way through. You can see we are safe and that we are clear. 
So looking the gun over, <clears throat> the grip's the first thing that I noticed. It's kind of unusual. You've got this little, these little cutouts here. Um, it's re it's really slick. Like I say, it's just in, engraved in the plastic here, and these little inserts have actually got the what I consider really the texturing. Um, you know, it it feels like any other plastic grip. It's a little slicky to me. I think that if I was going to carry this gun all the time, I might actually consider putting some grip tape on this because it does feel a little slick to me. But anyway, that's just me. Um, going over the top, you can see your sights here. They do have a, a, a white dot, three dots set up. Now, this front sight is staked to the slide, so I'm not sure about getting that off, but this one obviously can be changed out so if you wanted to put a better visibility like you know green or red or whatever you'd like on the rear sight you can do that um, I'd like to be able to change all the sights but I guess you can't have everything you do have an accessory rail here so if you're the type of individual likes uh, put lights and lasers on your gun you can certainly do that of course your uh, slide stop here you can see that and you've got your safety. Now keep in mind, this is just a safety only. If I pull the hammer back on this, this is not a decocker. So you have to manually decock the weapon. Now some people like that. Um, if you're used to carrying a 1911 and you want to carry it cocked and locked, well, you've got that option. You can set this thing up just like what you're comfortable with. So it's not a bad way to go as far as that goes. And once again, this is a double action, single action. You know, you see your trigger pull there for double action. And then you can see your trigger pull. For single, I'm going to reset the trigger. That's not too bad. And once again, you can watch that reset. So it's pretty good. Obviously your magazine release is right here. It's a pretty good size, so getting the magazine release is really, really simple. It does come with two of these 16 round magazines. Now there's some other information floating around out there that says these are 17, but these are not. This is a 16 round magazine uh, plus one. So the total capacity is 17 rounds, not 17 plus one. So if you see that, that's wrong. These are 16 round mags. Anyway, you do get two of them, which is nice. And once again, you've got this pretty good pronounced beaver tail here. So if you're the kind of person that likes that little extra protection on the hand, you certainly have it. Um, you got some pretty good cutouts here on the rear of the slide to manipulate it. I mean, these are pretty aggressive. So if you had gloves on or whatever, and you were gonna manipulate the slide, it's very easy to do so. Um, like I say, this is a, you know, polyfer frame with a steel slide, um, between the accessory rail, you know, and the good trigger guard. And, you know, you can at least change out that rear sight. It's got a pretty decent feature set up, um, for the money. Um, currently I've seen these listed, uh, somewhere around the $449 range. And that actually may be a little bit higher than the normal price just because of the way gun prices are right now. So it's got a pretty decent feature set uh, for the money. Let's go ahead and talk about the range because I was actually pretty pleased um, with some of what I saw um, at the range. So once again, we're going to verify that we are safe and clear. You can see that we are. And just kind of talking about this gun... Um, I'm a pretty big fan, as a general rule, I'm a big fan of double action, single action weapons. Just because um, the double action trigger pull, you know, generally is going to be about twice what your single action trigger pull. Um, using my scale, um, I got some varying weights on these trigger pulls, but, uh, you know, I was getting close to nine pounds on this double action trigger pull. And the single action trigger pull was closer to three and a half pounds. 
So not bad for me. It, it's a it's a pretty comfortable trigger, and it was pretty consistent on single action. It's that double action trigger that seemed to vary a little bit as far as how heavy it was on my scale, but it's pretty smooth overall. Now, um, this firearm it fits very very comfortably in the hand. I will say that um, the shape of the grip. Um, like I say, the texturing, I think, uh, could probably use some grip tape or something. But overall, it's a very comfortable feeling firearm in the hand. You know, the contours, you've got this little raised contour on the top of the grip here too. And that gives your, your thumbs a little bit of guidance as far as where they're supposed to go in the first place. So it's not bad. Um, using pretty much every kind of range ammo that I have you know, SMB, Winchester, and uh, hollow points. I use several different uh, types of hollow points. I usually try to run um, Hydra Shocks, and I've got uh, Golden Saber. Um, there's about two or three more. I, about seven total types of ammunition is what I ran through the gun. And, you know, not surprisingly, it did pretty well. I, I usually don't have problems. I mean, a gun's got to be in pretty bad shape you know, to just fail repeatedly. And this gun did pretty well. Now, as far as accuracy, I typically shoot at around 21 feet as far as my defensive training. Um, I'll shoot longer distances, just see how, you know, how good the gun is or how good I am. But 21 feet's about where I uh, will just practice for defensive shooting. And having no prior experience with this firearm, uh, the first magazine, I was shooting a nice little one, one inch group, um, you know, just immediately. So the gun shoots very well. It's very smooth. I didn't have any mechanical issues or problems. Um, when you look over the firearm and of course we're going to take a minute to, uh, thank our friends over at Don's weaponry for providing us this beautiful example of the MAPP one MS, um, Don's Weaponry is a huge supporter of firearm safety and education, and we can't thank them enough for their continued support. Um, looking this guy over, for the look and fit and finish of the firearm, which seems pretty good overall, um, it's really not a bad uh, you know, value for the money. So... Of course, question that's going to come up with some people is, is it as good as, you know, what it's copying? Well, there's a ton of different CZ clones out there, and this is another one. I think that from some of the others that I've seen, this is a pretty well-made firearm. So, I think that between its uh, specifications and range performance, if you're thinking about buying one, um, I think for the money, it's not necessarily going to be a bad choice. So what's it like to carry the MAP-1 MS? Well, oddly enough, being a, uh, a CZ clone, um, the first thing I did was go to my holster collection and see if I had a CZ holster that would fit it. And, of course, I've got two that fit it like a glove. I've got a little Galco leather that's for a CZ-75, and it fit it like nothing. And I also have a crossbreed for a CZ-75, and it fit it very well, too. So even though not directly designed for it, two holsters uh, that are inside the waistband that were, you know, pretty much perfect. So once again, in the beginning, we talked about this uh, as far as size comparison. We use the Glock 19. So if you've carried a Glock 19 before or something similar in size, well, no surprise, this this feels the same way. Okay, once again, the only thing about this is it does have this beaver tail. So when you carry it, the position that you carry the firearm does make a difference. Um, I tend to cant my firearm just a little bit forward once I have it in position. And that definitely helps kind of even this out. So I was able to carry this firearm uh, inside the waistband about the same way as a Glock. Now, it's a little bit thicker, like I say, um, and I've carried a CZ before inside the waistband, and it wasn't an issue for me, but it does feel like it's a little bit more substantial. Not a lot, but it feels a little bit more substantial inside the waistband than that Glock 19 does. But once again, I was able to do it comfortably. Um, 
and as long as you've got a good quality holster you know with padding that's one thing i like about the uh, crossbreed holsters is the leather comes up and it really covers this whole area around the uh, beaver tail and so it's not going to be touching the body so it's pretty comfortable so overall um, just like a Glock 19 or a similar size firearm it can be carried daily with no problems whatsoever just got to have the right holster well overall impressions well in the beginning you know the whole idea the whole uh, kind of genesis for talking about this gun today was um, there are some people who've been on the fence you know they look at the price point and uh, they said well I've, I've never heard of this you know what's the deal with this gun well look you've got all kinds of of clones that are being imported by all kinds of companies and you know this is no different Rock Island Armory has got this gun that they import it's made in the Philippines it appears to be made pretty good like I say, if you look at the fit and finish overall, um, it looks like it's not a bad pistol at all. It shoots well. There's no mechanical problems with it. And you get a pretty good, you know, feature set on the firearm. And like I say, personally, um, I'm a big fan of double action, single action uh, firearms anyway. You've got the ability to carry it cocked and locked. So, you know, there's a lot of flexibility as far as what you can do with this pistol. Um, I do wish the front sight was a little bit different setup, but once again, you can change the rear sight. But if you consider all of that, and then you consider that right now they're selling for about, you know, $450, that's a lot less money than, you know, a lot of similar pistols. So I couldn't find anything about this that was a, a, a real negative in any way. And it's a pretty good price point. So I think that if you've been on the fence and you're looking for something that's a good value that has a lot of the you know, feel and features that you might have uh, been willing to pay for. Um, I don't see any reason why you couldn't do it. It seems like it's a reliable firearm. So that's my take on it. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys once again. Um, it's always good to have you stop in and, uh, of course, comment. Um, your participation really helps because a lot of times there'll be a lot of in-depth questions that come up. There's people who are in the industry or who who also own these firearms and, uh, and it helps each other out in the comments and we really appreciate you for that and once again if this is your first time to the channel or if you've been watching our videos and had a chance you know do us a favor if you don't mind and just hit the subscribe button there if you're on a mobile device you can scroll down below the video and hit subscribe and hit the bell icon and it'll let you know whenever we do something new and of course it always helps us out so we're going to be back very soon with another video uh, until that time once again thank you so much Everyone be safe. We'll be back soon. Have a great day.